She's a pediatrician, a billionaire philanthropist, a mother, and the wife of Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Chan and her husband have pledged 99% of their Facebook shares to what's called the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. It is one of the most well-funded philanthropic organizations in the world. And only on CBS This Morning, we met Chan at an Oklahoma prison where an innovative program is trying to break the cycle of mass incarceration. We're going to have more of that story for you tomorrow. But first, let's take a look at how she went from the child of refugees to a philanthropic game changer. You don't do a lot of interviews. No. <laughs> Why is that? I would rather be doing the work and then the heart of it. I'm a practitioner. I've worked in the classroom, I've worked in the clinic, and that's where I get the inspiration and uh, the nurturing for my soul that I need, as well as um, being able to see and stay connected to what we need to keep our eye on in order to build a better future. A better future is exactly what her Chinese Vietnamese parents and grandparents were chasing when they came to the United States in the 1970s as refugees. My grandparents did something I think is completely courageous. They put their kids on a boat um, and watched that boat drift off to sea. We know very firsthand that um, hardship is real and opportunities are available but not available to everyone. But those opportunities led Priscilla Chan to Harvard University on a full scholarship. At first, it felt like an alien world. You almost left Harvard. Yeah, I had uh, my transfer paperwork done. So when was that light bulb moment? Like, I am kind of the epitome of the American dream and I do need to stay here at Harvard. I think I immediately knew when I showed up on campus that something um, out of this world had happened. And But I wanted to give up. But I, um, I also found a home running an after-school program. And when I saw what those kids faced in challenges, far beyond what I faced, and I saw what needed to be done, um, I knew I had to stay. And then what year did you meet Mark Zuckerberg? I met Mark four weeks into college. So you were going to leave even though you had met him? He was just this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it love at first sight? He just had a totally different uh, mentality in terms of being able to do things and take risks than I did. And I thought he was fascinating. But he was 18. I didn't think I was going to marry him. They eventually did marry in 2012 and now have two daughters. You got this. You got this. And a Hungarian sheepdog that has become an internet sensation. How did you end up with Beast? Oh boy, um, I didn't know better. I didn't have a dog growing up. Do you ever think you would go from being a child of refugees to Harvard pediatrician and now billionaire philanthropist? Even before I had met Mark, I knew I had, I had received uh, more than I could have ever imagined and it was going to be my life's work to make sure that that was true for others. You're getting a little teary-eyed. Yeah, it, it, it means a lot to me. It's not enough to just connect people. We have to make sure that those connections are positive. 2018 proved to be the most challenging year yet for Facebook. The social media giant is facing a multi-billion dollar fine for a series of privacy scandals, including a massive data breach. Has it been a tough year in your house? You know, um, we've done a lot of work in thinking about how we should be operating, and Mark and his team has done a great job at Facebook. But for the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, we also want to make sure that we are making good choices and being good stewards of the opportunity. And so it's an accelerator for us to really think through some of the harder problems. Does the initiative and all the good work that it does, is that a way to whitewash some of the problems that Facebook has had, especially in 2018? We have always known that we were going to give back, and um, we launched um, formally the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative in 2015. This is not a 2018 project. We were going to be doing this for decades, and frankly, there are a lot easier ways to build up PR than trying to tackle education reform or criminal justice reform. The initiative's goals are ambitious tackling global health and trying to cure and end all diseases by the end of the century. You want to eliminate all disease? Yeah. Well, if you think about it, penicillin didn't exist uh, 80 years ago. It's not linear. 
the microscope change the world. Our ability to sequence DNA change the world. We are not the ones doing it. We are empowering scientists to actually be on the forefront in making those discoveries. What do you think will ultimately have a greater impact on society, Facebook or the initiative? Too soon to say. I hope the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative is able to achieve its goals, um, but we have ambitious goals, and so if we can cure, prevent, and manage all disease, I think that'll be astounding in itself. Do you have political ambitions? Uh, no. No. I don't even want to sit here to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Does Mark have political ambitions? No, not no. for our family. You don't think he'll ever run for office? The reason I ask, because these are in some ways initiatives that impact the public policy debate. And at some point you start getting deeply enough involved in it that you start saying, I can only do so much with my money. I have to change the laws. We believe in advocacy, but we don't believe that we're the right person. People in our experience and voice should not be the most powerful in the room. What does your family think of the work you're doing now? You know what's funny? Um, my mom is still like, are you a real doctor yet? And do you still work as a doctor? But they are um, incredibly proud and excited about the work that we're doing. Yeah, my mom's mainly just really proud. Yeah. Yeah. You can appreciate that <laughs> yes. as, a, as, you know, as a daughter of immigrants. Yes. You know, no matter how much money that you have or whatever, it's like, are you a You're doctor? Doc Parents always a, have such a yeah. unique perspective of putting things in, in. <laughs> putting things in perspective about how they see their children. But clearly her mom is proud. And what the work that she and Mark are doing is also extremely yeah. important. And you're so right about the American story of a refugee and then yeah. coming from being a refugee child to giving back the way they are. That is, you know, the, the epitome of the American story. Yeah. yeah. She was, For both of them, yeah. yeah. She's very, very impressive. Very, very impressive. I, I do want to note, too, that we sat down with Priscilla Chan before yesterday's report from the British Parliament, which branded Facebook as digital gangsters. Now, they are accusing the social media giant of deliberately misleading the investigation into disinformation and the, quote, extent of Russian interference in foreign relations, elections, rather. A Facebook spokesperson told CBS News that the company shares the committee's concerns about false news and election integrity, adding that it is open to meaningful regulation and has already made substantial changes. Now, as Priscilla said to us, Facebook and the Chan Zuckerberg initiative, she things. says they are two separate things, but nevertheless, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is the co-founder, is the mm -hmm. CEO of Facebook, so it certainly comes up. And, and the initiative, their funding falls and rises as do shares of Facebook, too. It was nice to hear how she's thinking and the work that they're doing, Nora, because you're right, you're very... You very seldom get her, her perspective on things. And guess what? She's a very smart cookie. And she guess what, Gail? She knows her stuff. We have more for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> when, when, when? It'll be tomorrow. Okay. As we mentioned, we're going to continue our conversation with Priscilla Chan. And she's going to take us inside a women's prison in Oklahoma to show us an innovative program that is trying to break the cycle of mass incarceration. I did want to meet Priscilla Chan. I've been trying to get this interview for a long time. I've also always wanted to go inside a prison. Yeah. Oklahoma has the highest rate of female incarceration in the world, so it was fascinating to get to talk to some of these female prisoners, so we'll, we'll take you inside and tomorrow.